All right, guys and gals, welcome to game one of round one of the Tiny Wars Open Tournament. I am Advanced Warrior. And I'm CJ. And this is the format that we will be using to be recording all of our games. Uh, we're not going to do a map review because we have a separate video for that, so check out the playlist if you haven't already, where we give our own thoughts of the map and what we could possibly see. But right now we are going to head straight into the game with Plague, the number one seed on Isabella versus Jinbin on Penny. So, Isabella. Don't let the music fool you, Isabella is a menace. She has an extremely good CO zone and a terrifying CO power. Her zone gives her plus 20, plus 20, which is um, a little bit over some minimum and a little bit under some of the um, some of the extras. When I say like that, usually it's like 30%, 10% on some buffs. Uh, on attack and defense, so Isabel's kind of in the middle, which is plus 20-20. She also has plus, uh, I'm sorry, she also has two CO zone, meaning that if you attack the same unit with two units, both of those CO uh, units, I'm sorry, both of those units will be in the CO zone, so it's not too hard to get charged with Isabella. As for her powers, plus two movement to all units and plus two indirect range. So yeah, Isabella, powerhouse all around. Yeah, the uh, especially the plus two movement and plus two range CO power is ridiculous. Cause I mean, when you look at if you're coming from like Advanced Wars by Web, for example, like plus two move is pretty decent in those games, um, and then plus two range, like that's only on on grit, I think, and grit's insane. So like that. The plus two range by itself is already a menace, but plus two move is also really, really good in this game. Um, so overall, Isabella is kind of a double menace. That's why she is uh, very solidly like top tier, like definitely the best CO in this game. Um, in the base game, like you could say Calder is better, but that's because Calder is absolutely bu busted. But in this, in, in Tiny Wars, uh, Calder is nerfed, and so Isabella is by far and away the best CO. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then on the other side is Jinbin playing Penny. Um, Penny is the weather specialist of this game. She has a default zone of uh, 3 range and then uh, gives plus 10-10. Uh, so it's basically a default zone, like no, uh, not really uh, too strong, but also she has the global um, passive, basically, that uh, she's unaffected by weather. Now, in, in normal standard play, um, and in normal fog, too, um, this, uh, the weather effect is only really good for, you know, when she uses her CO power, uh, which grants a random weather effect for three days in a row. Um, three weather effects being uh, rain, snow, and sandstorm. Um, but, uh, snow is usually relatively lackluster because that's only minus one move for all units, uh, for all enemy units. Uh, rain forces fog of war and sets all units to vision one, so they can only see what's next to them. Uh, and all buildings can only, uh, are set to vision zero, so they can only see what's on that specific tile. Uh, which is kind of weird um <laughs> and then there's the uh, sandstorm which is by far and away the best effect you can get from penny uh which gives uh minus 30 percent attack um to the enemy which is is just straight up better than uh 30 percent defense like it's you, you can kind of think about it in the way that Eh, I, I think it's 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 not quite the same as like having 30 defense in Advanced Wars by Web, but uh, or you know in the older Advanced Wars games, but it's pretty dang good. Your your units tend to not die very easily um, if you have Sandstorm on. Yeah. So that is the review of kind of the COs. Yeah. So if there's any if there's any randomness in it in this game, it is the luck and 
Penny's powers. Uh, plus three zone, obviously bigger than Isabella's, but weaker when it comes to uh, stat density. Uh, Isabella gives twice as much more compared to um, compared to Penny, just 10%. Uh, Isabella plus 20%. Um, so yeah, but you could view Penny as like a CEO who just wants to build her power, uh, which is why she has that fairly large enough zone. And of course, it does expand once you get um, 30 energy um, in each of the powers. So yeah, that's kind of how I view Penny. It's like, you know, what someone who wants to get their power as soon as they can. And it all it is all kind of random. Uh, snow is kind of considered the worst, but on this map, I find it a little bit interesting because I feel like with snow, the bigger the map, the more effective the uh, the, the debuff is for movement, maybe. Uh, rain, uh, obviously having more vision than your opponent is very good. And especially in standard, they will give uh, your opponent the, the fog even in standard. So um, it might be something that they might have to look out for, uh, such as um, you can implement strategies that you could do in fog that you can't do in standard, such as a sneak attack with the front shift, uh, etc. So, um, I do want to point out right now, um, strangely enough, we haven't seen a single CO zone loaded yet. Yeah, so, uh, we went through that to kind of explain the COs, but, uh, spoiler, like, we're not actually going to see COs, I think. Either that or we're going to see them very late in the game, and usually, um, you would see them earlier. Um, Plague being a top player, like, he, he, he wouldn't neglect to do that, um, in a normal game, but, uh, we were told later on that, uh, because he picked Isabella, like, he, he didn't really want to, uh, use that against a new player since, uh, Isabella is very, very strong. Or, a, like, a, a newer player, at least. Um, yeah, something I do want to point out, uh, in this tournament, um, it, the way um, CO picks are worked is the same way that is in ranked, where they are allowed six bands, uh, each of the players, and whoever is mentioned in the bands cannot be used by either player. So, bands can stack. So, but that just means that there are more COs available to play for both of the players. So, um, uh, I think you just mentioned Jinbin's like a newer player or something I like think that. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I have seen a couple games um, from Jinbin, but uh, yeah, like usually Isabella, Brenner, sometimes Forsyth are usually the COs um, that are banned. So. It is a little bit surprising to see um, Isabella being played here, and oh, that is that tank getting that strike on that anti-air. Uh, that duster can fly freely, but um, the power of the dusters, honestly, uh, they do a lot for infantry um, and air units, not so much with vehicles. So um, if there's any infantry that that duster in the middle wants to target, then it can, but right now that duster is trapped, actually. Uh, actually, dusters, they're, well, while they can deal damage to ground units, they really are mainly only suited for air units. They do about infantry damage to infantry and bikes. It's just that they can't be attacked back by them. Still better than why, a vehicle. Yeah, they, but, but yeah, they don't, they don't do a lot to basically anything else. Um, so by trapping that uh, duster with that infantry there, like uh, Plague is actually getting just a lot more bang for his buck right there. Yeah. He doesn't have any uh, qualms about that. Um, he's not worried about that. Uh, looks like uh, Jinbin is threatening uh, the top property of Plague here. Let's hope there's like some proper covering for the. No. Oh. Plague might be able to interrupt that capture on the top. Uh, yeah, he's definitely going to be able to do that. Yeah. As you can see, a 5 HP anti-air does 4 damage to a duster. So, as always, anti-airs are amazing for going up against air units. No surprise. And looks like we're starting to see a bit of build-up on the south side here. Um, 
Jinbin forming a little bit of an infantry wall. Uh, not a terrible infantry wall. It's like all of the infantry can be covered. Uh, even that one infantry on the very bottom, which is standing in front of a river tile, so an infantry has to get close enough to even attack from that tile. But um, other than that, all those infantry are protected. That artillery is doing its job. Oh, and Jinbin looks like is moving in for an attack here. Yeah, um... Yeah, right now Jinbin is at, I think, probably a 1k income disadvantage, so it's not not the worst thing. Um, but I am not entirely sure what he's doing. I guess, like, positioning that, uh, that artillery behind... Did he the, just uh, attack a tank with a bike? He did. I'm not entirely sure what that's about. Um, but... Uh, I mean, he's definitely in a, trying for a position to kind of, uh, you know, get that cap off, but that's not going to happen. Um, Blake One. has his own duster um, that takes out that duster. It's a pretty decent cost investment that was just taken out there. Yeah, One damage um, for a tank and losing 7 HP on your bike. Not usually the best move, honestly. Yeah. Um, usually, you would only. Usually, I'd only recommend going for those types of attacks if uh, if the tank is already low HP, like you're trying to get a finish, or you're just trying to roll luck. Um, and yeah, I guess you know, still get some bonus damage or get a finish. Um, but that was on basically a full damage, uh, full HP tank. So, like, yeah, definitely wouldn't really rec recommend that. Would have been unfortunate um, if it was a misclick from Jinbin, but... Ah, that could have been the case. Sometimes that happens. Ooh, a rocket on the, the forward base from Jinbin. Um, those are all road tiles, so... That rocket probably gets some decent move, but, um... It wouldn't want to stay there unless it's getting good coverage. So, um, let's see if this rocket, like, would push Plague back. Right now, right now they're just clumping up on the bottom. Uh, two walls actually, um, a smaller wall on the top side for Plague. Um, he is comfortable with securing that one property on the top, right behind where that recon is. And, oh no, Plague deems this, uh, deems this push a bit safe actually. A little bit exposed with the artillery, but that would put whatever's attacking that artillery in between another artillery, two tanks, a battlecopter, upcoming medium tank, and upcoming mech. So, um... Let's see if Jinbin takes that bait. Yeah, he's definitely baiting some attacks on those artillery. Uh, Plague knows that he has, what, I think probably a 3k income lead? Um, so he can just sit pretty and just chill out. Um, Jinbin yeah, does not take it. Formation. Jinbin doesn't... Yeah, Jinbin also does not take that, but... Um, there's not a lot going for Jinbin. That rocket, though, is going to help the bottom side push, but uh, Plague's top side push is already quite strong. Um, he's leaving his art already exposed again. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, he has enough tanks in the area. He has a medium tank coming up that uh, even if that already fell, um, Plague is pretty confident that he'll have significant compensation in basically taking out the rest of those tanks. Um, possibly even that V-Copter too. Um, he just knows that he- it looks like he just outnumbers, uh, in strong units to, uh, basically space him- uh, space Jinbin out in the coming turns and just take those two or three properties at the top. Yep, uh, slowly starting to look like Plague is gaining control of the sides, and... Oh, are we seeing a push? Or... Huh. Yeah, I think mm, that's a little bit half... Uh, a bit of a half-hearted push. I don't think that's going to work out very well. I can maybe um, see why Jinbin would do that. J uh, by... Damaging those bikes, um, it would be a lot harder for Plague to try to capture that property. But in Plague's position, looking at it right now, uh, Plague doesn't want to be looking for um, properties right now, especially risky captures like that. If Plague were to go for properties, uh, he would probably try to clear out the area first from all threats, 
and then start to capture. But right now it's like Jinbin just gave away some some free units there. Yeah, also getting those per veteran promotions on those tanks. Oh, uh, Blake did what we were kind of expecting at the top. He used the bait um, and then uh, was able to very quickly like sweep up a lot of Jinbin's uh, units, his tanks, um, deal quite a bit of damage to that B-copter. Um, the artillery is misplaced and is out of range um, to cover those units that he just killed. Um, so, yeah, things are not looking great for Jinbin, and he resigns. Uh, um, understandably, understandably, he didn't have a, uh, too much play there uh, by that end uh, section. Uh, so we can see three income behind. Um, 43 units to um, 31. Alright, so, um, honestly, I kind of wish I did see some, uh, some CO uh, units being played. But um, that is unfortunately not the case. Um, yeah, to yeah, see this it. was a quite a vanilla game. Um, <laughs> basically, Plague was just demonst was kind of demonstrating how how the game can work without Zeus. It's it's a little bit more boring, but uh, not gonna lie. But um, like we still see just very good. Um, placement by Plague overall. Um, Jimbin did decently as well, building a defensive wall, um, but he was didn't you know didn't have enough income to keep up, um, and so a defensive wall won't you know work forever. Um, it'll eventually lose its power um, since he has that income disadvantage. There were a couple awkward turns I did also see from Jinbin, such as. Um... Damaging the bikes, I presumably presumably to slow down the capture, but uh, it just gave away like two free units for play to comfortably take up. Uh, slight awkward, slightly awkward artillery coverage. Um, the tank is like on the edge of the artillery range, so it cannot take a shot on either the medium tank um, or the tank. But um, overall, it's um, still good. Uh, plays from Jinbin. He didn't do absolutely terrible. It was, um, yeah, still well played by Jinbin, but, um, Plague is the number one seed of this tournament, so, uh, it is a little bit expected, but at the end of the day, I just hope these players at least had some fun. Yeah, and hopefully you're able to learn something from watching this replay as well. Oh, we're definitely gonna have more replays for you guys to watch. Alright, guys and gals, that is Game one of round one, Plague moves on to uh, round two. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, definitely check out the other games. I am Advanced Warrior. And I'm CJ. And you all have our warmest regards. Please take care. And thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao.